Joining us now for an exclusive interview is Under Armour CEO, Patrick Frisk. Welcome back to the show, Patrick. Good to have you. Hi, Sarah. Thank you. So a beat and a raise despite what's been a tricky environment relating to the supply chain. Talk us through what, what's giving you the confidence to keep the outlook strong in this kind of environment. Well, I think this is on the back of uh, four years now of, of transformation work that we've done at Under Armour and and really also, of course, benefiting a little bit from the, uh, the, the trend in performance that persists after the pandemic and through the, the remains of the pandemic. But it's also a testament to the operating model that we have where we're able to um, get things shipped to the right place, the right time, uh, even during the very difficult logistics and, and supply chain uh, things that we're, we're starting to see uh, really materialize here in the later half of the year. Uh, but I would also say our ability to spend against the brand and uh, the actions that we've taken to uh, reinvest into the brand here in the back half uh, in combination with, with better product and a very consistent and disciplined execution. It's really been a, a comeback story, Patrick, that, that you've implemented and, and really reset the brand around COVID after years of, of Nike killing it on the styles and Adidas taking share in the U.S. Is Under Armour the brand back? And, and where does that go? Yeah, we, we like to think so. I mean, we're very confident uh, in, the, in the outlook that we provided today that we're going to continue to perform here in the back half. And uh, we also mentioned that it was going to be a little bit more difficult in the beginning of next year. And that's really coming on the back of some of the uh, constraints that we're seeing, especially in, in supply chain as it relates to logistics and shipping, et cetera. But as it relates to the Under Armour brand, we've consistently seen improvements in the consumer responding to what we do right now in terms of both product, like you said, as well as the messaging that we have. And the fact that we're now being visible, you know, we're spending, we're back uh, on TV, we're back in social media, we're back in every which way where we can connect with the consumer. And we're doing it in a consistent way with the message that resonates. And as a consequence, uh, the consumer really likes what they're seeing right now. Is the easiest part of the, the margin improvement now behind you? Well, we believe that we're going to be able to continue to improve our margins going forward. Um, a lot of what we see right now is an ability for us also to maintain uh, pricing in terms of uh, fewer promotions, less discounts as the brand continues to elevate and, and we stay more premium. Um, so for us, uh, becoming less promotional has been part of the plan all along. And you also see that being reflected in our inventory levels. Uh, last quarter, we reported Under Armour being down 26 percent. This quarter, we're down 21 percent. We just got it to a flattish uh, end of year projection for our inventories on, on a growth of 25 percent. So we've been able to manage the inventory levels really well. So we're also now seeing that translate into a, a better you know, pricing ability for the brand in the marketplace. If you had to pick one weak spot, Patrick, some are pointing to e-commerce. And, and we did see sales declines moderate from last quarter, but they were still down. Why is that? Well, I think for us, what we're really excited about with our e-commerce is the fact that we've been able to stabilize the e-commerce at a higher level than 2019. So, you know, based on our 2019 to 2021 two-year stack, uh, we are now at a different level, which we find really exciting. I think when you look at a brand like Under Armour and you look at how we're trying to connect with the consumer, it's really important to look across not just one area of distribution. Uh, you need to look across all of the areas where you distribute your product. And you also need to understand how that's playing out globally. So what we're seeing right now is a very interesting phenomenon in, in consumer traffic. For example, in Europe, where you're seeing the consumer actually gravitating very strongly back into brick and mortar after having been incredibly digital uh, during all of 2020 and also into the early part of 2021 when Patrick. the UK was basically closed down.